Hello everybody out there, it's the future once again, and welcome back to another DVD update. This is 10.0, and I'm going to try to go through this as quick as possible because as you can see, I've got quite a few DVDs um, to, to talk about here and show off. I have plenty more that I have to get to as well, so there will be plenty more updates on the way. A lot of these are new ones that I've picked up. I've been going crazy at the $5 bin at Walmart lately and finding a lot of good ones that I like to... Uh, add to my collection I found TV shows stuff like that so um, let's get on with it here I'm not gonna try to give anything away about these movies um, I like to, everybody to go out and see them for themselves and see, think what they want to think but nonetheless if uh, I recommend to watch something definitely check it out I'm not gonna steer you wrong um, go down below and hit the links down below and check out Chronicord Media and also Cinestalker, I'm going to post both their links down below. They both have really awesome videos, and I always like to shout them out in my updates. So go down and check them out, guys, and you will not be disappointed. Um, let's get on with 10.0 DVD update on my collection. First, I have the universal release here of King Kong vs. Godzilla. It was the first movie to bring these two together in a fight. Everybody that has watched my vids knows that I love my Godzilla and King Kong. I actually have two versions of the Peter Jackson King Kong on DVD, um, but just nonetheless, I also have a lot of Godzilla tapes as well, which I will go show here in a second, but there's some good shots of the movie there. Two of the mightiest monsters of all time battle in the thrilling adventure classic King Kong vs. Godzilla. Godzilla. This is actually some good cheese. Uh, got it for Walmart for five. Got it at Walmart for five bucks, um, and also just to show everybody, I do have you know Godzilla versus Guy again, Monster Zero, and versus Sea Monster there on VHS. Also behind there, I got the '98 Godzilla, and there's the two versions of Peter Jackson King Kong. So that's how much I like this stuff. But now I have King Kong versus Godzilla to tie them all together. Um, so I was happy to pick that up too. I picked this up back around Halloween time. So um, I don't know if it was just around then that they're going to have it, but I've been seeing it in a lot of $5 bins too as well. And you can see it was the one that uh, brought got, uh, Godzilla was brought to Universal in this movie when they teamed up with Toho. Um, yeah, Toho. Uh, RKO General Permission, the character and name of King Kong. Um, oh, that's King Kong. Um, but yeah, there's Toho Company, so, um, uh, look at these shots of the movie. Oh yeah, I gotta love it. Picking him up by his tail and twirling him around. Uh, that's when he got blasted. So I gotta love that one. I'm not trying to take so long. Here's one that's still in the packaging I haven't opened yet. It's John Carpenter's The Thing. I actually bought this off a kid that lives here in town that sells a lot of them, um, that he gets from swap meets and stuff like that. And I had to pick this one up. It's got commentary with Kurt Russell and director John Carpenter. I like anything John Carpenter. And I actually think that this is a remake. I think there was an original, uh, yeah, his chilling version of the classic thing. Um, I'd like to get the classic thing too. Um, but it takes place in 1982 there. Um, a lot of like special features on here too. Glad to get the uh, unopened, still sealed copy too. Um, but a great movie to definitely check out. I've seen it before, but I can't wait to bust this open and give it another watch and watch that commentary. Uh, the next one I just picked up today at Walmart. It's 1941. Uh, Steven Spielberg um, directed movie. Paranoia meets Pandemonium. It's supposed to be like his take. A comedy, like a war comedy. This is the collector's edition. These are all universal releases, by the way, that I've been showing off. Um, it has an original documentary of the making of 1941. Um, Robert Z Robert Zemeckis, uh, John Milius, and uh, Bob Gale and Steven Spielberg are all in there. Others involved in the film. Um, also, Steven Spielberg's home movies and behind-the-scene footage on here, too. Uh, Spielberg never really gives any commentaries on his movies, which I wish he kind of would. They'd be really interesting. Uh, but there you see it, 1941. This is a 1979 movie here. Um, universal release, as I said. Uh, spectacular is certainly the word for this utterly wild comedy epic directed by Steven Spielberg um, a lot of people frown on this movie actually on Steven Spielberg um, but actually my dad and myself both enjoy this movie and when I seen it in the five dollar bin I'm like I gotta grab that to add to the Spielberg collection um, here's another one I picked up today the egg and I and Mon Pa Kettle 
Um, these are really old school. Uh, they're ones that my dad actually recommended. 1947 and 1949 um, were when they were released originally. Um, just some old comedy, classic uh, comedies. Uh, Claudette Colbert, uh, Fred McMurray. Um, I think these, the Egg and I and Mom Paul Kettle were actually related in some fashion. I'm not sure. In uh, Mom Paul Kettle, the lovable hillbilly duo from the Egg and I. So there we go, starring uh, um, in their own starring film. So uh, Mom and Paul Kettle were in the Egg and I. See, I'm not too up on this movie here, but this is a universal double feature release. Mom and Paul Kettle. Found this in the five dollar bin. If you're interested, um, I'm yet to check it out. But I'm sure it's great. My dad always recommends great movies to me. Um, the next one that's a universal release that I picked up out of the $5 bin, and I've actually watched this one, Killer Elite. Uh, Jason Statham, Clive Owen, Robert De Niro, based on a true story. I thought it was a good action flick. Uh, it's not bad for a watch. Um, diabolically clever, impressive. Um, here you can see some shots on the back. Killer Elite, a classic action thriller that will keep you guessing. Um, you see double features, or bonus features include deleted scenes, um, but you can't go wrong with any movie with those actors in it, Statham, Clive Owen, Robert De Niro, so check that out if you get a chance. Um, this is one I really recommend, Brad Pitt and Killing Them Softly, um, Richard Jenkins, uh, James Gandolfini in one of his last films before he passed away, Ray Liotta, uh, can't go wrong with any of these actors, and definitely Brad Pitt. Um, he's a hit man in this, uh, a guy that kind of just wants to kill him softly, and you'll know what I mean if you see it. A juicy, bloody, crime, blue, juicy, bloody grimy crime thriller that satisfies. And uh, this is one of the better movies that I've seen on, like, uh, mob-related activities lately, if I, you want to say that. Um, Gandolfini does a good job. Um, Brad Pitt does excellent. I always like him in any movie, so. This one actually, um, let's see when... If we can find a date on when this is released. Um, if not, I'm just going to move on because I hate doing this and wasting so much time just trying to find out a date. 2013. So there's that one killing them softly. So pick that one up definitely. Five dollars at Walmart. Here's another one I got for five bucks. Tom Hardy, um, Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf. I think that's how you say it. Gary Oldman. You know. I actually know his nephew from London, so it's always cool to see movies that he's in. I really liked this movie a lot. Mia, Wazikow Mia Wazikowski, I think, Wazikowska is how you pronounce that. Sorry, on some of these uh, names, I just am not really good at pronouncing. Based on a true story, though, Lawless, when the law became corrupt, outlaws became heroes. This is actually an Anchor Bay released movie. Um, it has the feature commentary with director John Hillcoat and author Matt Bondurant. Um, he actually uh, wrote this book that was like uh, fictional, like it was true, but also had a lot of fiction in it too about the uh, Bondurant boys who were played by Shia LaBeouf, uh, Tom Hardy, and Jason Clark. Is it Shia LaBeouf or LaBeouf? I mean, I don't know. I don't even, he's not the greatest actor, but in this movie, actually, he annoys me in Transformers anyway. I can't say he's not the greatest actor, but in this movie, um, he really does a good job. And Shiloh LaBeouf. Shiloh LaBeouf. I don't know. But a good one. Lawless. Check it out. Here's uh, Matthew McConaughey, who I really enjoy in a lot of movies. A newly minted American classic. It is Mud. It has the DVD and digital ultraviolet. And you can see down there, Certified Fresh by RottenTomatoes.com. I love it when they put that on there. Matthew McConaughey, Ty Sheridan, Sam Shepard, Reese Witherspoon in this too. Um, this is a movie that you really can't explain. You just got to check it out. I thought it was really good. So when I saw it for five bucks, I actually watched it on Netflix. And when I saw the DVD for five bucks, I had to grab it. Um, it actually has director commentary on here too. Um, really, really good movie. Um, it has to center around Mud there, played by Matthew McConaughey. And uh, yeah, a good one to check out um, if you're interested. Definitely. Uh, there you see Five Stars by Orlando Weekly, a newly minted American classic. Next, I finally found the um, final Tarantino film that I didn't have in my collection, and that is a film by Quentin Tarantino, Jackie Brown. I know he's getting a lot of uh, media play right now with some of the stuff that's going on with him and the uh, NYPD. 
That is a Lionsgate release, uh, just like these last two. This was a Lionsgate as well. Um, I think this was Anchor Bay as well, Lawless. Uh, this was uh, Lionsgate, along with uh, the Lionsgate Miramax, you know. Um, so, also this had Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, which I already have, but I wanted that copy of Jackie Brown. When I seen this for five bucks, I grabbed it. Triple feature. Here's my other ones I already have. You can see I have Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, um, all the way up to Django, are the movies that uh, he's uh, written or directed. Uh, I gotta get Four Rooms uh, up in here, too. Um, he produced Iron Man with the Iron Fist, too, the first one. So I'm glad to have that one. To uh, have Jackie Brown in the collection, it's really good, you know. Um, starring, you know, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Robert De Niro, Pam Greer, uh, Robert Forster, uh, Michael Keaton, Bridget Fonda. I mean, how can you go wrong? It does have intense action. And, uh, it's a mix of intense action and edgy humor. Uh, one of the most underrated Tarantino films that I don't hear talked about too often. Here's two John Waynes that I added to the collection. You have Hondo. And Island in the Sky, and I can go over and show my uh, John Wayne collection too, but I'm really not going to at this second because uh, I'm already 11 minutes in. And like I said, I want to get through this and I have a lot more to show. So here is Hondo. Um, it actually has commentary by Leonard Malton, um, Western historian Frank Thompson, and actor Lee Aker. It's really good. I've actually checked this out. Um, if you're a John Wayne fan, check definitely check out Hondo. Found this in a 385 bin at Walmart. Um, this one I got for 68 cents, Island in the Sky. It's uh, one more of a World uh, World War II, set after World War II. Um, he plays Dooley, a former Army pilot flying transport missions who's uh, forced to crash land and has a fuel-starved plane on a frozen lake after it strays from its course. Um, it's kind of like a survival story. This has commentary by Leonard Malton, uh, William Wellman Jr., Daryl Hickman, James Lydon, and Vincent Longo, too, so, and a lot of other special features, as you can see. But I love the commentaries. Um, but these are all both from the John Wayne collection, as you can see. Um, and they actually mention each other on the DVD itself. So check those out if you're a John Wayne fan. Uh, here's one that I picked up from my friend that was selling those. Uh, triple feature. It has uh, The Longest Yard, North Dallas 40, and Necessary Roughness all in a triple feature all inside here. And they're all their single owned DVD too. It's not one of them ones that's stacked on top either. And oops, lost Necessary Roughness there. Um, actually have the second one in. Longest Yard and Necessary Roughness. I was watching uh, North Dallas 40. If you haven't seen these movies and you enjoy football, all three are classics. You know, you had Burt Reynolds and Longest Yard. They made a remake of it, but it's the Lockdown Edition. has commentary. North Dallas 40, Nick Nolte, and Mac Davis. Um, it didn't have commentary or anything, and I've yet to check out the Necessary Roughness version that they have in here. Um, but yeah. Three DVDs, five but are for like two bucks. I can't beat it. Uh, I picked up it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown from my friend too. Um, this is actually a Paramount release too. Uh, bonus features included are You're Not Elected Charlie Brown, an episode. Um, uh, People have spoken and Lucy's spoken even louder. Uh, yeah, it's just an episode um, on uh, the election, kind of. But you got to have It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown if you're a collector. And it's still sealed and unopened. And uh, I can't actually wait to bust this open and check it out. Um, I know the running time is only 25 minutes. Um, this is from 1966. It's a, it is a Halloween tradition for a lot of people to check this out. They always play it on Halloween time on TV. Um, gotta love old Charlie Brown and the Peanuts. They actually have the Peanuts movie out right now, which I want to see. Uh, but there's that. I picked up also this unopened uh, War of the Worlds collector set. Um, it doesn't have the original movie, which I'm still looking for. It does have a DVD, The Night America Trembled, a movie starring Warren Beatty, Vincent Gardenia, and Warren Oates from 57 that I do want to check out. It does have the 1940 radio interview with H.G. Wells and Orson Welles and an audio CD of War of the Worlds radio broadcast featuring Orson Welles. So it's really cool that I have a CD of the actual broadcast now. Um, I just really like this cover. Too. It'd be a nice one to set up on the shelf. Um, War of the Worlds, one of my favorite films from back in the day. 
I wish they did include the original one on here, but unfortunately um, they don't. But I got it for pretty cheap, so I thought it looked interesting. Got to check that one out. Um, these next ones, I'm doing all Warner Brother um, releases. And the fact is, because I picked up this, um, the Warner Brothers story, you must remember this. And this is a great documentary, two disc set, as you can see, parts one, uh, disc one and disc two, the Warner Brothers story. Goes through the entire history of Warner Brothers movies from um, the beginning all the way up to 2008 when this was released. So it's been a few years since it's been released, so... I'd like to see an additional, maybe third CD made about this, um, but you must remember this, Warner Brothers Studios, um, I mean you can see there, you got Batman, uh, Harry Potter, you got the Superman, Clint Eastwood actually narrates this, you can even see John Wayne there, um, Cagney, Bogart, they're all in here. And the reason that uh, I'm going to show all Warner Brothers movies is because I really did enjoy this and I looked at my updates. DVDs I had for my updates and they're a whole bunch of Warner Brother releases so I was like might as well just show them all off in a row and this is one I know that Sinistalker who I shouted out um, is looking for and it's Electric Boogaloo uh, the wild untold story of Canon Films and it's another uh, you know it's a crazier documentary than the Warner Brothers story but it is released by Warner Brothers so I thought that was pretty cool that two of these documentaries that I really enjoyed are released um, by Warner Brothers, and one is about Warner Brothers, but here you see it, um, over the top, Masters of the Universe there, you got Chuck Norris there, Jean-Claude Van Damme, um, there they are, uh, Yoram Globus, um, and you get a lot of interesting stuff here on the making of these films, and just how crazy it was, and how they pretty much just put out a film about anything as long as they could make a buck on it and stuff like that, but it's just really good. And I love that cover of a montage of all these characters together. Electric Boogaloo, which was actually the follow-up to Breaking, um, as if you watch this documentary. So that's something that I learned in there. Um, but yeah, gotta love it. See, uh, I hope Sinistalker can find this. i seen a whole row of these at Walmart again. So they gotta be there over in your area in San Diego, hopefully. But Electric Boogaloo. I picked this up even though I already have Dark Knight. Uh, I got this uh, 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 just sealed copy uh, for 68 cents, so I was like, I'll probably never open this up. It's a full screen edition, but so just for the collection's sake. But everybody's seen it. Heath Ledger as the Joker. Christian Bell, you know, plays the Dark Knight. Um, moving on from that, I got this Warner Brothers Home Entertainment Academy Awards Animation Collection. Um, 15 winners restored from the original Masters. Picked this one up for 5 bucks at Walmart. It has expert commentary on 5 cartoons, music only audio track on cart 2 cartoons. Um, you got Bugs Bunny, Speedy Gonzalez, Pepe Le Pew, uh, Sylvester the Cat. Uh, you know, just everybody's in here. Tom and Jerry. Um, you just gotta love... Uh, Warner Brother uh, cartoons and you can tell I do because I picked up not only this but today I was there and I had to grab Stranger Than Fiction Looney Tunes 19 far out cart cartoons every one of these cartoons has to do with something paranormal or like you can see Dracula there they even have a El Chupacabra episode uh, Tech Support uh, Planet of the Taz three different episodes on that um, I mean, the names of these, everything here is um, sci-fi oriented or something like that. And I thought it was really cool. Stranger Than Fiction, just a compilation of 19 far out cartoons. You got Daffy and Tweety and Porky and Taz, Sylvester. Um, also, you got uh, or Yosemite Sam, not Sylvester, and Bugs Bunny. Sorry. But uh, I thought this was an awesome addition next to the Warner Brothers Academy Awards collection. So, happy to grab those. Um, I'm a big cartoon fan. I like to just throw them in and watch them. They're fun. Um, Robot Chicken, Star, War, Star, uh, Star Wars Robot Chicken, sorry. Over two hours of special features on here, too. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, some of the special features have a commentary. Yeah, episode commentary. Uh, panel presentations, uh, just a lot of stuff. Animation meeting, 
Um, it's Robot Chicken. If you haven't seen it, it's a show on uh, Comedy Se or Adult Swim. Yeah, it's a show that airs on Adult Swim on TV. Uh, 23 minutes long is all this is, but I got it for pretty cheap. So I'm a Star Wars fan, and anything Star Wars related, I like to watch or pick up. I have all the Family Guy Star Wars stuff, so it's really good that uh, you know they use these figures of Star Wars figures and kind of do their own little robot chicken Star Wars thing. Um, can't wait to bust this open. I did not buy it for four dollars, by the way. Um, next, I picked up this today. 40 years of everlasting fun. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, Gene Wilder, the original. I will not even pick up a copy of the Tim Burton remake. If my girlfriend wants to, she's a Tim Burton fan. If she wants to, go ahead. But I will not get that one. Because in my opinion, this is the only uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory that exists. Um, <clears throat> this actually has a scrumptious documentary. Pure Imagination, the story of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Mouth-watering commentary with the Wonka kids, which I can't wait to see a commentary on this movie. There you see the creepy Oompa Loompas that kind of just creeped me out when I was a kid. Wow. Um, <laughs> also, uh, Vintage 1971 featurette, theatrical trailer. I always got to love when they put the trailers on here, too, and I recommend always watch the trailer before the movie. Because um, in my opinion, that's what they're there for. To watch before the movie. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yes, Gene Wilder, great performance. Uh, Johnny Depp couldn't even touch him. Glad to get that one. Next, it's uh, Tom Cruise's uh, movie that made him a star. Um, he had the lead role in Risky Business. Really good movie. Don't really want to tell you what it's all about. Um, but as you can see, uh, he soared to stardom, it says. And uh, a liberated call girl crossing his path. They pitched the perfect script and direction by Paul Brickman. Rick, Risky Business is a first-class affair. Got this for uh, five bucks. It has uh, commentary by Tom Cruise, Paul Brickman, and John Avnet. It's the 25th anniversary retrospective, original screen tests, and more. Entertainingly entertaining movie, Chicago Sun-Times. Um, Tom Cruise and Risky Business, glad to grab that. And remember, all these, till I say so, are Warner Brothers. Um, here is one of the first... Uh, big movies that uh, Martin Scorsese did, and that is Mean Streets. Exquisite, savage, compassionate, and brilliant, uh, Joseph Gelma said from Newsday. This is the special edition with commentary by director Martin Scorsese. Um, he, you, people say Scors Scorsese, he sc says Scorsese, so I always try to say it right, Scorsese. Um, but it has a lot of uh, special features there. Um, really good. This one has... Uh, of course, Robert De Niro, Harvey Cattell, um, back in their younger days. You can see him there, right there. Harvey Cattell, De Niro. Um, but just a classic right here, Mean Streets. And I was glad to get this to put in my Martin Scorsese, Scorsese um, collection. Um, five films, uh, collection thrillers. I got this actually for North by Northwest. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest. I got this for like eight bucks at Dollar General. Um, it has The Fugitive, Shawshank Redemption, L.A. Confidential, and Lethal Weapon. The first one, which I've been trying to find forever, um, was also on this. So I had to grab it. It has this sleeve underneath. Looks just like it. But I, I don't know. I'm just a freak and leave the sleeves on. North by Northwest from 59. Lethal Weapon from 87. The director's cut, though, made in 2000. Uh, Fugitive 93, um, you have Shawshank Redemption from 94 and Confidential from 97, all top top rated uh, movies um, when they came out and uh, classics in my opinion, especially Shawshank Redemption and North by Northwest and the original Lethal Weapon. Confidential and Fugitive are really good too. All Warner Brothers releases too and it's funny because that documentary that I showed off, the uh, Warner Brothers one from 2008, you must remember, shows off all these movies in there and uh, that's how thorough they get um and you can see the warner brother logo right there so really glad glad to get that north by northwest is my main one that i wanted and it's really good especially that commentary that they have on there and since i got that first lethal weapon i'm at the switch hands here um i had to get a uh, lethal weapon too i got this from uptown for 68 cents um this thing still had some of the um tape on it and stuff that like it was still kind of sealed up but it had been used um, it's in perfect condition. Um, I did have to peel a sticker off, and I hate that because I kind of messed up that shiny cover that I really like this DVD. Really shiny. 
Um, the only thing about this one is, though, um, I, and the special features, it has a documentary, but no commentary on this one like uh, the one does on um, the Five Film Collection. Um, but nonetheless, you got to love anything Mel Gibson, and Danny Glover and him were great in Lethal Weapon, so you might as well have Lethal Weapon 2. This is the director's cut as well. Um, this one was made in 2000 as well, so they must have released both of them in the same year, the director's cuts. Um, this was a 1989 movie here. Um, the next one that I got from Uptown, actually a rental version, but it is uh, Warner Brothers, is Mad Max Fury Road. I really enjoyed this, and I already have um, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome on uh, VHS, but now I have Road Warrior and Fury Road on DVD. I had this Road Warrior that I had in a, um, just to compare though, kind of. The new Mad Max. In my opinion, they should have made him a different type of character, but they left him as Max. Um, it's it's pretty thrilling, though, and anybody who likes action movies, um, they don't let you down. The War Boys are cool on here and stuff. Um, the Immortan Joe um, was pretty creepy-looking character. Kind of reminds me of a lot of Darth Vader, though. Um, but Tom Hardy, you just can't beat him, man. He's awesome in, uh, as Bane, also in Mad Max, and also in that Lawless. So I was glad to get Mad Max Fury Road. This would cost me like 20 bucks at Walmart, but I got it for like $2.99 because it's a rental version that they sell uptown. So it does have that rental on there, but I don't care. It's a copy. Um, Strange Brew I picked up from up uptown for $0.68, cents, an old one with Rick Moranis. Um, this movie was made in 1983, the year after I was born, actually. The McKenzie Brothers Beer Up Under Misfortune. Yeah, it's about the McKenzie brothers, Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis. Uh, really good comedy. I've actually yet to pop this back in and check it out, but I remember watching this when it came out. Yes, Warner Brothers 2 really uh, distributed this. Strange Brew. Um, yeah, Dave Thomas, Paul Dooley, Max Vincetto. Um There it is, eating some donuts. Rick Moranis, gotta love it. Uh, good Night and Good Luck. Pretty decent movie. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., Frank Langella, uh, David Strathern, and more. Um, it's about a 1953 uh, TV show, uh, Good Night and Good Luck, uh, portrayed by Murrow, uh, the face of television. Uh, David Stratham portrays, uh, who is it? Edward Murrow. Um, CBS Newsroom is the battleground. McCarthy's in the mix, too. It just has to do a lot with the politics and stuff back then, too. Commentary by director-screenwriter George Clooney and screenwriter Grant Heslov. Uh, yeah, this is a newer movie, but made in black and white. Um, but I picked this one up for $0.68 cents just because I thought it'd be a good movie. I haven't really watched it yet. This is the widescreen edition, too. Um, this one I picked up. I remember watching this back uh, when it first came out, and I think it was 2004. Yeah, 2004. It's The Big Bounce with um, Owen Wilson, Morgan Freeman, Gary Sinise, Sarah Foster, Vinnie Jones, and Charlie Sheen. Gotta love Charlie Sheen. I'm a Charlie Sheen fan myself. Owen Wilson and Morgan Freeman aren't half bad as well, and neither is she, really. Um, visit the uh, stars and filmmakers on the set of Big Bounce. They don't have a commentary or anything to it, but this was uh, based on a novel um, by Elmore Leonard, uh, Get Shorty. Um, yeah, it's based on Get Shorty, and I think they made a Get Shorty movie, so I don't know. The Big Bounce. Uh, check out more if you like Elmore Leonard movies. Check it out. Uh, here's one uh, Swordfish, uh, starring John Travolta. I remember watching this. Halle Berry. Uh, she has a pretty uh, good scene in this. Uh, very sit slick and stylish. This actually has commentary by director Dominic Cena. Um, all two alternate endings in here, too. Uh, this was always a good one that I like to check out. Just a fun movie, Swordfish. Um, I have both Analyze This and Analyze That. Um, you know, starring Robert De Niro and Billy Crystal. Definitely Analyze... Sorry there. Definitely Analyze This is better than Analyze That. But you gotta love the duo together at uh, any time. Analyze that. I was kind of disappointed in this one, really. Um, it has audio commentary by uh, Harold Ramis, who was the director and co-writer. Rest in peace to him as he did pass away. One of the Ghostbusters. Uh, the first one also had uh, 
commentaries, uh, one by Billy Crystal and Robert De Niro, and the other by director and writer, co-writer Harold Ramis, uh, documentary and everything. I love the first one. This is a straight-up classic. Analyze this. I'm a De Niro fan. Uh, Billy Crystal does great too. Like you said, like I said, Warner Brothers release. Um, and then I had, if I got to analyze this, I had to get to analyze that. Um, this was the second one. Um, and in my opinion, he's in the, uh, you know, nut ward in this one. So it, it's just totally different from the first one. And I just didn't enjoy it as much. I watched him back to back and I was like, it's not as good. The old Dennis the Menace uh, featuring Walter Matthau. And this kid, he's like my age now. I'm 33. I remember this when it came out when I was a kid. And it is a Warner Brothers family entertainment release. Um, what is that kid's name? Um, hmm. Walter Matthau, Mason Gamble. Uh, shoo, I don't know. Christopher Lloyd? Hmm. I don't know what the kid's name was. Let's see what they have it in here. Uh, no, 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 no. I always have something like this go down where I have to take a few seconds. I don't know, but it's Hank Ketchum's popular comic strip come to life. I can't really remember that kid's thing, name, but I remember watching this, and they did have a featurette um, where they were talking with uh, John Hughes and Walter Matthau. So I'm thinking, is it John Oh, it's a John Hughes production. But they talked to the actual kid that played Dennis the Menace, you know, later on in life. And he's a lot older. Um, he was like five when he made this movie. And it's pretty interesting. Um, wait a minute here. Christopher Lloyd, yeah. I forgot to tell you, Christopher Lloyd's also in here too because I seen that picture and I had to say. I forgot his name there for a second. But, you know, from Back to the Future, Christopher Lloyd plays that bum there. Uh, it wasn't the greatest movie of all time and still isn't, but it's always worth a watch, especially for kids. My daughter would probably love the heck out of it. And the last Warner Brother one, as far as movies go, was the epic classic Casablanca. Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman, Paul Hendren. Uh, it was the Academy Award winner for Best Picture in 1943. I love when they put that on there. And you know, Warner Brothers does a lot of these Snapcase DVDs, and that's what that is. Is a snap case. This is, is a snap case. Casablanca, the best Hollywood movie of all time, Leonard Malton says. And that's a high praise coming from uh, film critic Leonard Malton. Um, but yeah, special features on here are a documentary, uh, You Must Remember This, hosted by Laurel Bacall. Um, I wonder if uh, the documentary can't be the complete one that I have there, but I'm going to have to check that out. Featuring uh, recently unearthed outtakes, all new introduction by Lauren Bacall. Um, just all kinds of little special features there. Uh, winner of Academy Awards including Best Picture, Casablanca is America's most popular and beloved movie and rightfully so. The motion picture, gu get the most <coughs> excuse me, motion picture guide. Um, I'll take a drink here. I wasn't going to try to do that, but I'm getting a little far. 33 minutes now of talking you're gonna have to take a drink um after uh Casablanca though I was really happy to pick that one up by the way you know I love Humphrey Humphrey Bogart even though he wasn't the greatest actor at all times but uh just gotta love Humphrey um I picked up all these are tv shows um yeah all tv shows are cartoons The Odd Couple um starring Jack Klugman and um I can't even think, Tony Randall, I can't believe I didn't think of his name right off the bat, but I love this, I went through this every episode so fast, this is actually the complete first season, I got it for $7.50 at Walmart, uh, my dad recommended it, Walter Matthau from Dennis and the Menace there actually starred in the original Odd Couple movie, and this was a spin off the TV show, gotta love Jack Klugman on here as Oscar, uh, Tony Randall is Phoenix, Felix Unger, um, Jack Klugman, Oscar Madison, he's like a sports writer, and, uh, the other one, uh, is a photographer, hypochondriac, I mean, it's just great, uh, all 24 first season episodes, and it also includes a fifth bonus disc featuring four of Jack Klugman and Tony Randall's favorite all-time series episodes, and it also has, a uh, commentary on featured episodes, too, um, select episodes, I mean, um, but has a lot of um, intros by Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall's the one that produced this as well. Um, it actually, um, 
is a really, really good series. So if you can pick this up for $7.50, I guarantee that if you like classic television, you will definitely enjoy this. And it is all in color, too, as you can see some of the shots there. So Tony Randall, Jack Klugman, rest in peace to both. But the odd couple, great, and I'm very happy to have it. The next one I picked up, um, these were two that I found at the treasure hunt little bin that they had at Dollar General. And I had to grab them for a dollar a piece. It's the classic cartoon, Superman, America's Heroes, Volume 1 and Volume 2 there, as you see. So, for a dollar a piece, and I've yet to bust them open and check them out, but for a dollar a piece, you know, I love cartoons, love superheroes. I could not pass up uh, getting these. Um, if they have other volumes, I'm definitely going to try to grab them, but I think maybe these might be the only volumes. But I'm not sure, and I don't know who makes the DVDs. I'm sure it's just some... Um, company that does uh, public domain because I'm pretty sure this cartoon is public domain now but it'll be interesting to check out these so very happy to get those at the five dollar bin today I am real happy on this pickup they had season three the complete season four disc set including 47 episodes of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles classic cartoon produced by Fet Fred Wolf Films um, this is actually a Lionsgate release and yes down here it says for the release 1990, 91, and 92 Fred Wolf films. So I'm thinking uh, season three. Um, it has relive all your favorite season three mutant kung fu action and this 47 episode collection. I'm thinking this is more probably towards 1991 or the end of 91 or 92 maybe. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are bursting straight out of the sewer and ready for some mind blowing mutant morphing pizza powered action. Yeah. This is going to be great, man. Season 3 collection featuring 47 episodes. Join the Green Machine and their friends as they help to save the world against Krang, Shredder, Bebop, and Rocksteady one slice at a time. Man, I can't wait to tear into this and just watch them all. Very, very happy to grab this. Five bucks for a four-disc set of Season 3. I'd like to get all the seasons, but there's a ton of DVDs to get to be able to grab. Um, unless they've condensed them down to shorter ones like they have this. But there, I think there was uh, at least like six seasons or so. Um, but this was in the uh, prime of the run, in my opinion, in season three. Um, I don't know. I don't know how heralded this season is, but damn, it's classic Turtles. So what can you say for five bucks? Also, if you've seen my Batman special update, you saw that I picked up the complete... Uh, first season of Batman there, starring Adam West and Burt Ward. Um, but today, for 20 and change, I decided to go ahead, because I love the first one so much, to grab the second season, part one, <clears throat> of two. So there's two parts to the second season because it runs a long time. It has a lot more episodes. It was the longest season of the three seasons they put out. So I'm definitely on the lookout for season two, or the second season part two, and part and season three. Um, as you can see here, man, it, it just, man, these are so good that I went out and got this. I mean, that's just got to tell you something right there. Mr. Freeze on the back here. Um, I think many faces or something like that. Uh, the Joker, Cesar Romero, uh, old Egghead, Vincent Price down there. Man, it's just. So great. There's some of Catwoman's thugs fighting off Batman and Robin. Um, but this is so damn good, guys. And I'm so happy to have these. That it's, I just can't even tell you. It says, it's that meddling Cape Crusader. Go tell him to take a bat jump in Gotham Lake. <laughs> Ma Parker says that. And that's old Ma Parker there. Uh, man, second season part one. I'm so happy to have it. And these were released in 2014 and uh, made in 1966. So I don't have this one op busted open yet, or else I would show the inside off. Uh, maybe I'll do, when I get the rest of the seasons, do a complete review of all the seasons. I plan on doing like a Top Villains uh, special video, maybe, from the Batman series, because I'm enjoying it that much right now. Um, but yeah, really happy to pick that up, guys. And that was my main buy. But now, almost going 40 minutes. Uh, this is probably one of my longest updates. Sorry for taking so long. I had a lot of stuff to show off, especially all them Warner Brothers movies. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching, as always. Um, go down, check out Chronocord Media. Check out Sinistalker at their links. Uh, big ups to them. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Leave a comment. 
Um, give me a like if you like what you see. And until the next update or whatever I decide to do, as always, guys, peace out.